Welcome back to the Big Sunday Show. President Biden getting feisty at a rare press conference in Japan for the G7 summit. My guess is I'll get a question about, you know, well, wait a minute, you know, the American people aren't satisfied. Well, guess what? As I told you all before, most of this, what we've passed, doesn't kick in. It only kicks in over time. And in the most predictable thing you'll ever see, then there was a little bit of sparring with our own Peter Ducey. Well, of course. Do you think that if there is a breach, nobody is going to blame you? Of course, no one will blame me. I know you won't. You'll be saying Biden did a wonderful job. I, I'm I, asking. I know you. Would you be blameless in a default situation? On the merits, based on what I've offered, I would be blameless. On the politics of it, no one will be blameless. Biden is set to meet tomorrow with House Speaker McCarthy. Earlier on Sunday Morning Futures, McCarthy said one thing is non-negotiable, extraordinary spending. We have more money coming in to the coffers than at any time in history. The real challenge is, is our spending. It's very odd to me with what the president says. The president pivoted back. He actually proposed spending billions more. We just can't afford to keep borrowing from China and be more dependent and create more inflation. I do not think it's extreme that we simply say we should spend less than we spent this year. Now, Jason Chaffetz, you've worked in these sort of deals before. Is the president counting on the media to do exactly what he just said, which is I will be blameless, they will be to blame, and when we default, all hell breaks loose because they didn't do their jobs. Is yeah, that what he's counting on? Democrats always bank on the idea that traditional media will be on their side and they'll make it look like it was some MAGA Republican problem. But the, the president had a really bad look on, on this trip. Uh, not only the way he tried to shush down a, 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 an Australian reporter, right. um, the things that he claimed. Look, the, the fact of the matter is Joe Biden should have been at the table three, four months ago negotiating this, said he was, it was non-negotiable, wouldn't even talk about it. Then he's got to cut his trip short because he actually does have to, to, to talk about it. And Speaker McCarthy, House Republicans, I think, get a lot of credit because they did pass a bill. The only one who voted to not raise the debt ceiling are House Democrats. So they have to deal with that in real time. Glad they're going back on Monday to talk about things. It, the reality is, Joe, nothing will pass until they actually get to a deadline. A deadline to propel actions. Yes. That's the only thing that will actually make this come to, to fruition. Uh, but as Kevin McCarthy said, the speaker said, we have all time record high revenue and you're 30 plus trillion dollars of debt. If you spend one million dollars a day every day for 3000 years, that gets you to one trillion. Wow. So we're that far in debt. And the president wants to tax more and spend more. I don't think that's where the American people are. That's your stat of the day, by the way. Thanks for sharing that, Jason. Appreciate it. Molly, from a journalism perspective, again, we've seen this movie before. Right, exactly. Where the countdown clock is yes. going to happen, of course. And then at the 11th hour and 59 minute, yeah. some deal will be made, most likely kicking the can down the road. That's what we see time and again. Yes. Is that what's going to happen here, you think? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here because uh, we've seen so much that has never happened before happen in Washington in recent years. So in years past, you could say, oh, you know, they'll get it. They'll finally get it together at the end. But I can't say like you are implying it does feel like Groundhog Day. Here we are again where the American people watch out of the corner of their eye because they've seen it before. And, you know, they'll get it together. Like you said, Jason, the deadline. We got June 1st. It's looming up awful quick. Uh, so the question is. How much, how concerned should the American people be? It seems like at least they're talking, like they're working towards something, one step forward, two steps back. Uh, what is it, uh, McCain? It's always darkest before it gets even more dark, the famous sure. things. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I think it is worth keeping the eye out of the corner of your eye just because of what recent years in Washington have shown. Sure, it nine days. Like the bending doesn't always happen. And nine days is an eternity, we'll no question. Uh, meanwhile, the president, talking about that Chinese spy balloon, he calls that whole episode silly. And then this silly balloon that was carrying two freight cars worth of spying equipment was flying over the United States, and it got shot down, and uh, everything changed. Um, in terms of talking to one another. Kellyanne, multiple intelligence agencies and experts say the spy balloon got a treasure trove of our intelligence. Everybody said that we should have taken that very seriously instead of allowing it to fly over Alaska, down to Montana, and across the whole country, stopping off at different silos to make sure it could get everything before we finally did something about it over South Carolina. Here's my question. 
Is the president, through his son's business dealings in places like China, where we still don't know what the value add and service was provided to Chinese electric companies, for example, is he compromised? And that's why he's downplaying this, because he doesn't want to take on China basically on anything. At least that's the way he's posturing himself. He may be compromised. Uh, same thing in Ukraine, but he certainly is incoherent when he talks about this. Oh, and by the way, he's lying. Uh, the governor of Montana said there were plenty of places that it could have been taken down in his own state. They actually have designated places for such a thing. But when the president of the United States says to us something we already don't believe and know is false, mm -hmm. that nothing to see here, the Chinese balloon wasn't serious, it was serious, it was real, we all saw it. They waited for it to traverse literally across, this, across the country, in, eight, around, the, around the country in 80 days journey, practically, and then there it is in South Carolina. Um, also, he's just too glib. I know that we long ago gave up on this notion of Joe Biden, the unifier, Joe yeah. Biden, the bipartisan guy, but he's just an angry old cuss most of the time, and he lies. The other thing he lied about, he said today at the press conference, by the way, everybody, he's not under oath at the press conference, <laughs> um, he said he put the quad back together. That's just false. The quad, Australia, India, United States, and Japan got together mm -hmm. from the tsunami, short-lived. We in the Trump administration put that sucker back together in exactly. 2017. He just lies. And, and let's get the proof around that. Let's get the sound. President Biden taking credit for the quad, as Kellyanne just called it, uh, that put was actually put back together by Donald Trump. Go ahead, guys. Look at the meeting we had here today, uh, uh, today and yesterday. Uh, the quad. Did, I, I bet you I would maybe some of you thought it, but I doubt many, many people in this audience or any other audience would have said that two years after being elected, I'd be able to convince India, Australia, Japan, and the United States to form an organization called the Quad. Kellyanne, this is a lot like the president saying that actually he inherited the border crisis. He inherited high inflation and crime. Again, where are the fact checkers? That's my question. Well, the fact checkers actually in this case are the American people. His poll numbers show that people don't believe anything he's saying. Joe, two thirds of Democrats don't want him to run for another term. So That's why right. the heck should the rest of us feel saddled with him? And his approval ratings on every major issue are underwater, more disapproved than approved for this reason. I just don't think he's got credibility. He's a former chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. He's the vice president of eight years. And when he goes on the world stage, we all feel very embarrassed and nervous. Jason, yeah, the, 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 he's not a good look for the United States of America. He's a poor communicator. The debt ceiling's not going well. China's on the march. Uh, Iran is still moving towards a, a, a nuclear bomb. You know, it's this is not a good look for the president of the United States. And he exaggerates and makes things up. Nobody believes what he's saying. And you can easily fact check this in about 30 seconds mm -hmm. on any search engine. And this is what he continues to do. And the debt ceiling, I'm just telling you, they, they have to hold the line. They have to cut spending. And he's going to look foolish, I think, at the end. We'll see in nine days, no question about that. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.